Chairman, and thank you for being here. Uh, we talked a lot about the, the fact that we're $20 trillion in debt, uh, looking at significant indebtedness in the next 10 years. The point that Senator King brought up about the interest rate, I'd, I'd like to follow up on that in the sense that what is the interest rate that we're paying now in the national debt? Not, not as far as dollars, but the percent. I think your effective rate is probably right around 2%. You're going to okay. pay about $400 billion of interest this year. And we talk about the economy heating up, which we desperately want, and yet that's going to cause interest rates to go up. Is it true that traditionally the, the, the debt is serviced at 5 to 6%? I think the historical 40-year average, um, which is roughly my adult lifetime, is about 6%, yes, sir. And it's so, been as high as 16 or 18 in the 1970s and 80s. But 5 or 6% is a conservative number yes, sir. that you know, we could all agree on. What does it cost for every 1% increase in the... The good rule of thumb right now is $200 billion. $200 billion per year? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. So. Uh, you're talking about a tremendous amount of money over a 10-year period. Yes, sir. And, and as, as Senator King pointed out, you get in a situation just like individuals get where you simply can't service the debt. Uh, so $200 billion, that's, that's a third of our defense budget? That's correct, yes, sir. Roughly. It's almost so, exactly that. Again, that, that's, I think it really highlights the importance of getting these things under control, as my constituents understand. Yes, sir. One of the things I think we can all agree here is that the budget process, the appropriations process, is broken. Here we are, it's, it's you know, we're into uh, almost February. Uh, the fiscal year started in October, and we're not going to have, we're not going to have this thing resolved uh, for another couple of months as far as fiscal year 17, yep. much less fiscal year 18. So how do our agencies, you know, how can they spend efficiently? We talk about a lot about government waste. How can you be efficient, you know, when you're facing that kind of scenario? So, uh, Senator Enzi, myself, I talked to you when you're in the office about biennial budgeting, things like that. Do you have any ideas as to how we can, again, as a Congress, attack the uh, the situation that we have so that we can make the process more efficient and ultimately save a lot of money? You're exactly right, Senator. The government agencies, most specifically the Defense Department, struggle to operate efficiently under a uh, continuing resolution, which is typically what we've done here for the last several years. And as I've discussed with you and many members of this committee, reinvigorating the ordinary regular appropriations process um, should be um, not only a priority of Congress, but I hope to help make it a priority for the administration and have the opportunity to explain to the President why it's important that appropriations work, not only for political purposes, but for actual practical purposes and why having an appropriations bill allows Department of Defense, for example, to operate more efficiently. So I'm hopeful that um, you will have whatever support you need from the White House in order to reinvigorate the appropriations process. Very good. On the issue of improper payments, which we've talked about, during your time on the House Oversight Committee, you sponsored legislation to empower states to access Treasury's Do Not Pay database. Despite similar leg legislation actually being signed into law, it appears OMB has yet to give states the access. Can we look forward to seeing th these resources being made available to the states for their use? Yes, sir. I think one of the advantages of having one of the co-authors of an improper payments bill running OMB is that you can pretty much count on the fact that we will take that very, very seriously. Very good. Under uh, President George W. Bush, OMB instituted an administrative pay-go rule uh, requiring any rules or other administrative actions which increase the deficit be offset by other actions that would reduce the deficit. Uh, President Obama opted not to use this, this, uh, this ability. Will you b go back to enforcing this rule as OMB director? Um, yeah, I'd like to point out, I believe that rule was actually originally attached to a debt ceiling debate. It's one of the specific examples of uh, how we do take that opportunity to step back and try and reform our spending system. I look forward to advocating to the President um, that it would be fiscally sound for this administration to encourage PAYGO. Uh, one of the problems we've had, not, not only in the past administrations, but administrations in general, is as we ask for things from OMB, ask for things from the various agencies, sometimes those are not given to us in a timely fashion. I know you've been frustrated with this as a member of Congress. I think everybody in this room has been frustrated. Uh, will you uh, tell us 
that you'll be very responsible in doing that so that uh, we can get the information that we request. As I believe I mentioned in my opening statement, I have been on the other side of that. Ha having been a member of Congress and seeing what it does to the way we operate when we don't talk to each other and don't communicate and one side hides information from another isn't helpful to anybody. And it's certainly not helpful to the people that we represent. So I do look forward to helping the information flow again and to having a good rep uh, uh, relationship with um, all parties on both sides of the Hill. Good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.